you used to voice the microphone. I did. In fact, that's where I first started doing Bluetooth. Uh, I was in the audio group, um, doing audio architecture, the, the streaming uh, architecture. Uh, that was part of uh, the, the kernel streaming mechanism we had to basically take the audio from the applications uh, through the services and into the, and down into the devices. I, I wrote a lot of the uh, I, I wrote like the USB audio driver, for example. It's still it's still in use today. Yes. Well, I started doing Bluetooth at Microsoft too. Yeah. Um, doing um, audio profiles, so A2DP, HFP, uh, and some AVRCP. Um, so Apex is simply a codec that is uh, passed over A2DP yeah. uh, as part of that profile. Um, it's actually not built into the specifications per se. There are only three um, codecs who are actually part of the specification. That's obviously SBC, which is required yeah. in order to be actually certified Bluetooth uh, ATT uh, compatible. But then also um, AAC and MP3 are also part of the specification and have um, a lot of the parameters that are laid out in the specification to use those. So you've got your base, your baseband layer, which yeah. is really just your hardware connecting to hardware, and then you've got uh, on top of that you've got your L2 cap layer, which is really a, a, a more abstract transport. And on top of those is usually where you'll find your profiles, such as um, or actually your protocols on which your profiles ride. There's nothing that says you can't create an Android phone which will do Aptex. Uh, it's just that there will be usually a, a surcharge to do so. Yeah. What will usually happen, and it's all really a matter of who wrote the code in the phone, right. um, but what will what happen is the phone will uh, advertise what they call streaming endpoints. And the streaming endpoints are associated with the codec that it's capable of streaming. And so what the phone will do is it will discover that it actually has a, a, a command called discover um, in, in the AV DT, AVDTP uh, uh, protocol, which on the top of which A2DP rides, right. it'll send out this request, say, "Tell me what your endpoints are," and the, the device will respond, "Well, I've got this endpoint and this endpoint," and it tells you if it's in use by someone else. It also tells you what codec is capable of, and it, and so what you do once you find those endpoints, and you assume and you find that it's not in use by something else, for example, you can go and say, well, what are your capabilities? And it'll tell you, well, okay, um, I have this codec on this endpoint, and it does this sample rate, this bit width, and so forth. What will usually happen is the, the phone will have a, a preferred order of codecs, depending on what it discovers on the device. Well, what usually happens with an iPhone is usually they'll, 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 they'll try, first they'll try AAC, which is their native codec, and then they'll, they'll say, well, if you don't support that, then we'll drop back to SBC. So they, they, the, the, the common denominator will always be SBC, correct? Right. Only if that's the only thing that they can agree on. Like I said, when they do the discovery, it doesn't really matter what order the, the endpoints are on the, on, the, on the actual device, what the source will do is say, well, I prefer this one and then this one, and then this one. Right. So if I can find this one, I'll use it. If yeah. I can find this one, I'll use it. And so, but the bottom line is, if nothing, if all else fails, SBC is the answer. And and, and those those things are actually, usually they're on your packaging. They'll say, well, we're APTX compliant, or what have you. And so, you don't know if you're going to be AAC or SBC. Depending. Yeah, there is some of that. 